the banking sector is still a short, well, it's imploded. So, I mean, would you want to short some of the bank stocks after some of them are down 60, 70 <laughs> percent? I mean, got to have a lot of guts to do that. Mm -hmm. um, probably better just to mostly stay away. You know, as Warren Buffett says, when, when the tide goes out, you see who's naked. This is a different tide. This is not a credit tide. Credit quality in the United States is really good. This is a tide of a mistake, which is a lot, some of the regional banks, especially those that have a lot of deposits above 250, bought long-term bonds at very, very low levels and have massive mark-to-market losses. That's why Silicon Valley failed. Uh, also, they failed because they had a very, very concentrated type of deposit base, which has a very big herd mentality. So it, it would be very hard to regulate. I mean, even if you apply the stress tests to a Silicon Valley, that may not have detected the interest rate. The stress rate. test that they had would not have detected right. their problems. Right, their problem, because nobody was looking for an interest rate risk on the balance sheet. You're just looking for credit. liquidity. And that's what the, credit, that's what the stress right. test has been for the last so 10 years. It's, it's hard to think of a, you know, in, in trying to figure out whether or not you invest in regional banks, you're trying to figure out, well, what can they regulate to prevent this? This is a very specific situation of interest rate risk, which may not come up again for a long time. Well, we have it now. We have it now. And, you know, what I would say to that is, so over the weekend, uh, we, were th we, you, we were thinking, okay, so let's say the government doesn't bail anybody out. So clearly JP Morgan and Bank of America benefit. And it turned out, even though they did get bailed out, J.P. Morgan and Bank of America benefited. So our first thought was, well, maybe we should buy J.P. Morgan and Bank of America. And then upon farther reflection, we were like, maybe not. Because given what's just happened, all the regulations are probably going to get much more stringent, mm -hmm. making the banks much less profitable. And that's not going to be clear for many, many months. So why be a hero? because you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. Would you say that the banking sector right now, with the uncertainty given what will happen on a regulation front, that financials are uninvestable right now? I would say, you know, we, we were looking as a team at every single bank. And I would say, given the change in the regulations, the best you can say is you don't know. And if you don't know, you shouldn't play. Wow. So then, what do you do? Let's say you take. Oh, yeah. Let's say. Let's say you clear out your position because you're like, you know, this is. We don't know. We don't want to play play in this pool. What pool do you go to? Well, that's not an easy question. Well, yeah, um, but I mean, that's I mean, I, I think. I, I, okay, I think is. what's happening is we're moving from one paradigm to another paradigm. So the paradigm of the last <laughs> several years has been rates are very low. You're paid to take risk, and you're actually paid to take a lot of risk. So, you know, what did the best of the last 10 years? High growth tech stocks. And what did the best within high growth tech stocks? Super high growth revenue stocks with negative earnings. Okay, so what did the worst last year? Super high growth stocks with negative earnings. Now, are people gonna go back to that? I don't think so, especially if rates stay up. Mm -hmm. So what I think is coming is Tina is dead. Number one, I think you're going to have a much more diversified portfolio. You certainly can leave money in your money market fund because it's over 4%. I'm not sure if it's over 4% tomorrow, Maybe not but anymore. it's still around 4 which is fine. I think over time, you'll be able to buy some treasuries and buy some bonds. And there are going to be a lot more themes than just tech, infrastructure, bringing in the supply chain back to the United States. And um, you're going to need to manage risk a lot more than people had. So, you know, people who have, <clears throat> who's outperformed over the last 10 years? Tech investors. You know, the group is now so volatile, I think everybody should take their exposures down. Not that you should invest in tech at all, but you really should diversify more, more of your portfolio, um, take down your risk, manage your risk, tailor your portfolios to your clients. One size does not fit all. Um, and given the fact that, you know, you know my team and my, my partners and I, we go back every single day. Is there a recession? Is there not a recession? I watch your show. You've had people come on and say there is a recession, and a month later they said it's not a recession. It's, um, it's a very uncertain time because we've never had the confluence of stuff that we have today. I th and I think that argues for taking less risk. Right. But, but well, Steve, uh -huh. go ahead. So if, if, if we haven't had recession yet, and the, the S&P never bottoms before a recession, in terms of market sequencing, 
and the fact that we've seen these credit reverberations and bubbles just start. I mean, how do you see this this playing out, both in terms of, you know, you don't need to give us the crystal ball on no, the no. levels on the s I mean, let's talk about next week, Where are for example. We? You know, the beginning of the year, good news was good, bad news was bad. And then in February, good news was bad, bad news was good. And now let, let's talk about next week. So, I mean, there, 50 basis points is off the table. So either they're going to do 25 basis points or they're going to do nothing. So let's start with the nothing. You know, I got calls from for today that, well, because of Credit Suisse, maybe the Fed will do nothing, and that's really positive. And I, I, my, my response was, really? You're, you're rooting for a financial crisis so that the Fed won't raise rates? I mean, if the Fed doesn't raise rates, I can't, how is, I mean, maybe it'll be positive for a couple of hours or a couple of weeks, but the Fed won't be raising rates because it's scared. Well, if the Fed is scared, you should be scared. Mm -hmm. You know, on the other hand, if the Fed raises rates, even in the face of this by 25 basis points and does and says that we're not, we still could raise more, then that's like, wait a minute, you're sort of caught between a rock and a hard place. Financial conditions have really tightened, but you still have inflation. It's not clear, it's not clear either move is good.